welcome to the next stop on the Compassion Hop, and welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole Watson, and I'm a mixed media artist living in Austin, Texas. I'm excited to be in this group of artists creating a hop just for you, celebrating compassion and difference through art. Before beginning to create, I did a lot of thinking and brainstorming trying to figure out how I was going to represent this topic in my art journal. I thought a lot about compassion and how I show compassion and kindness to others, and then I realized in order for me to be compassionate and kind to others, I have to be that way to my be that way to myself first. One way that I've done that over the last couple years is tending to my garden. I love to plant flowers especially flowers that bring the butterflies and other nature to my yard. I have some big, beautiful windows in my living room and I like to watch the butterflies and the birds um, enjoy the flowers that I've created or the flower gardens that I've created for them out there. And um, I began to think about the flowers that I've planted over the years and the story of these daffodils came to mind. So after watercoloring that first set of daffodils, I then gessoed my art journal pages. I'm doing this because I'm waiting for those daffodils to dry and I'm going to watercolor some more daffodils while my art journal pages dry. I'm using a Dina Wakely Media journal here and you'll notice I'm also adding gesso to that burlap page. And now it's on to my second set of daffodils. Now here's where I'm going to admit to you that I am not a professional watercolor. I really love watercoloring, but I'm not perfect. I like to do it kind of grungy, um, stylistic, not perfect, um, kind of in my mixed media style. So this is actually my first time watercoloring daffodils. So a couple things here, normally I don't watercolor or create my subject first. I'm doing this for a couple reasons. One, I wanted to create them first just in case I couldn't do that so that I could change my topic if needed. Second, this will allow me to play with my subject as I'm creating the background and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The other thing I want to mention is that I cut out a lot of this watercoloring and I'm going to add a second video to my channel with the watercoloring so you can see it in a whole. Otherwise this video would have got to be a little too long and I didn't want you to sit through the watercoloring if it wasn't interesting to you. If you don't enjoy watercoloring or you have another topic in mind for creating a similar journal, you could stamp and color inside. You could cut out magazine photos. There's so many other options. Don't let the fact that I'm watercoloring scare you away from creating a journal page similar to mine. I have the link to the full watercolor video below in the description box and above in the art card if you're interested in watching it. And now let's start on the background layers. I have a beautiful ledger sheet that I'm using, some other bits and pieces of ledgers, and some book text. First I'm going to put some pieces of the book text down with matte medium on the front and the back. Then I'm going to stick the ledger on top. Once the ledger page is stuck to the top, I'm going to add some additional book text. This is going to kind of soften that square edge of that ledger page, um, allow it to look like it's kind of um, not floating on top. I'm also going to add some additional pieces of ledger pages mixed in with that book text. You can see how adding that additional ledger page and book text on top is softening those edges. I also added that larger piece of ledger to the right because I have a plan in mind of how I'm going to create on that page. <music> 
Once all that matte medium is dry, I grab my gesso again. I really love the way gesso, especially watered down gesso, um, plays and interacts with old book pages. It gets this really cool texture and cool look to it, so I love to spread just a little bit on top of book pages, ledger pages. It helps um, push them to the background a little bit more, disguise them, soften the edges, and it also, um, the paint, when you add to it, interacts differently when it's on top the gesso and on top the um, plain book pages. So this is going to add a little bit more interest in my background when I add my next layers of paint. And now I've set my journal aside for that gesso to dry and I'm going to create some more collage papers for my background. I grabbed this stencil by Eye Stencils, I'll have it linked below, and some black spray paint. I'm spraying it through the stencil onto deli paper. I love to spray on deli paper because there's less chance of error than um, spraying directly on my journal pages. Once I spray it twice, I also flip the stencil over and use the um, reverse stamped image of the stencil. While my stenciled images are drying, I also sprayed my um, daffodils with fixative. Now I did take those daffodils outside to spray them, however I do use that black spray paint, that um, Liquitex spray paint in my studio. It doesn't have a very um, strong smell to it, but that's personal choice and preference. If you get it, you'll have to decide what's best for you, but it's probably one of my favorite um, sprays to use. I love how it how it sprays, it doesn't clog very often, and it has a really low odor that allows me to use it in my studio. I do have a ceiling fan which helps a little, but it really doesn't have that strong of a scent compared to that fixative. So you just saw me take a quick picture of my layout. I was playing and arranging those daffodils kind of to get how I wanted. This is going to allow me to create my next background layers. So that I put the um, next uh, papers and paint and the places that will look best for how I designed um, those daffodils to look on the pages and I took a picture in case I wanted to reference it as I was creating. Now I'm adding that spray painted deli paper to my background. Using deli paper and matte medium also helps it to disappear. You don't really see that deli paper when you're adding it to and you can see the book text and the ledger sheets um, peek in behind it. And once in a while I grab my daisies just to check to see if I want to add more deli paper or peel some off before it dries and to kind of just check how the composition is coming along. And now that my deli paper is dry, I'm grabbing color to use. I grab Payne's Gray, um, it's an acrylic flat paint by Golden, and I also grab a sepia acrylic ink. Now I end up not using the ink at all right now, but I'm going to pick it up in a little bit. So my first step is just to take that Payne's Gray color, kind of water it down, use it at full strength, and layer it on my journal page. I'm trying to create like a color story here with my color. I'm not wanting to cover up my entire page, adding some just some interest and movement with that color to kind of push some of that paper to the background to kind of make it cohesive and come together using the color. I'm going to splatter it. I'm going to layer it. I'm going to add more drips and just um, play along as the paint moves and as my heart <laughs> moves, I guess, and takes me um, as I create. I don't really have a direction I'm going. I'm just watching the paint flow and figuring out where to go.
After the paint dried, I again picked up those daffodils just to check out the composition, see if I needed to add some more paint or if I had enough and kind of brainstorm and figure out my next steps. Now I could have left my background here. It looks great, but I needed to add a little bit more to it to add some interest. Because this journal page is really personal, I didn't want to use somebody else's words to put on my pages. So I wrote a little poem about the daffodils. Now if I don't have time to explain the daffodil story as I talk here, I will add a little bit more about it below. But I'm typing up a simple poem that kind of explains um, the story of these daffodils and why they kind of ha were an example of kindness and compassion um, in the last couple years and the hope that they gave me and that um, allowed me to share that kindness, I guess, and compassion with others. And so I'm using my old typewriter and a piece of ledger paper and just typing that poem out. You could also handwrite it. You could um, use some stickers. You could use your computer. You don't need to have a typewriter to um, add a poem to your page, but I encourage you to add some words of your own to your journal pages. Now I'm just ripping off some of the edges of my poem. I'm going to check it on my journal pages all throughout the process. I keep um, my background in mind, my foreground in mind, and keep trying to check what I'm doing so I can just really um, mindfully, I guess, create and figure out my next steps. So I didn't like the poem alone on the page, so I decided to grab a tag to put it on. I grabbed this tag and the first step was to add some clear gesso to it. Adding the clear gesso will allow me to wipe off any mistakes that I made instead of the um, paint just soaking into it. And now for some difference, I'm adding the reverse stamp <laughs> of that stencil that I created by flipping it over and rubbing on it. It's going to add um, a difference to that, that tag and also disguise all that text that was on the tag because I didn't want to see it. I just wanted this tag because I really liked the hole there. The color of it matched the daffodils, but I needed to disguise all that mess on the tag. So remember earlier I picked up that sepia to use with the Payne's Gray and I never did and now I'm going to actually use it. It took me a little bit to I guess be brave and add another color. I kind of wanted to live with this page for a few hours, kind of let it rest and figure out where I needed to go next and now I'm adding that sepia ink that I was going to add before. The sepia ink is kind of warming up the pages a little bit, adding a little bit of grunge. It's also uniting that dark Payne's Gray with my lighter background, and it's going to allow my daffodils to pop just a little bit more from that um, book text and that ledger text. See <laughs> right there. I'm also checking my background again with the daffodils as I go through um, painting the sepia down. And as that sepia ink dries, I'm going to also use it to paint on the tag and add some sepia to it as well.
Now I'm adding a little bit more interest to my background. I really feel like my background is cool, but it's kind of static. It's There's nothing in there that's causing my eyes to move from the left to the right. And so in order for that to happen, I'm adding just a pop of color to my background. I chose fluorescent orange, one, because it's cool and I love it. Two, because it is the complement to blue. Blue and orange are complements. I could have chosen like a normal orange, but fluorescent just pops and it makes your eye just really gaze into that background. I'm also going to use it from left to right so that when you're looking at the journal pages, your eyes will naturally follow those cross marks from the left to the right of the journal page. I'm using two different colors of fluorescent orange, straight fluorescent orange and orange yellow, just from additional um, interest in the background and um, just adding those crosses all over, not too much, but just enough to move my eye across the page. You'll notice I'm using some little pieces of paper there for my palettes. They're called patty paper. <laughs> They're actually um, the paper, it's like deli paper, but it's smaller and it's used between like hamburger patties or chicken patties or different things to keeping them from sticking. And I like to use it for my paint palettes. I also like to use it for collage. So I was spreading out that fluorescent orange on it, thinking that I might use it for collage um, in a little bit on that tag. Now, once my little cross marks there are dry, I want to um, push a few of them back so it doesn't look like all of them are just floating on the page. So I grab the Payne's Gray and put it on a few of those crosses just to make it look like they're a little bit more um, cohesive and embedded into the journal page. And I also grab my tag and that Payne's Gray and I'm going to add a whole bunch of the Payne's Gray to my tag as well. At this point, I'm feeling like my journal pages need just something else, some other kind of mark. And instead of like stenciling or um, painting something, I just grab this Bombay India ink and just splatter some of it on my pages just to add a little bit more interest. I kind of overdo it on purpose. And then I'm gonna grab a baby wipe and wipe away the ones that I don't want. After that India ink dries, I grab my Stabilo All Pencil in Graphite and just journal um, a little message to myself. It's not going to be readable at all. It's going to add a little bit of scratchiness to the background, but it's allowing me to get my thoughts on the page from creating this very personal journal page. Now that the tag is dry, I'm just going to put a few final touches on it. I'm tying a piece of rust dyed fabric in the hole there. This rust dyed fabric is actually a huge um, example of kindness and compassion of others. I love our artist community on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and another artist was making some of that rust dyed fabric. I told her how lucky she was that I couldn't make it because the smell of vinegar bothered me and she sent me a whole bunch of it. I love the compassion and kindness of all of our artist friends out there. I also layered some of that um, patty paper underneath, um, tore some more of that ledger paper on top. I loved the numbers. It kind of went with my little poem and now I'm going to adhere it all down with matte medium.
I'm adding just a little of that sepia ink on top and I'll also an add, sorry, a little bit of the Payne's Gray as well. I felt like my orange, fluorescent orange there on the bottom of my poem was sticking out just a little bit too much, but it was also the perfect opportunity to add these two little words I found in the Tim Holtz stickers that match our YouTube op that say practice kindness. After I stick those little words on there, I'm also going to add um, the tag officially to my page with some of the Dina Wakely Heavy Gel, and I'm going to use the same heavy gel to um, adhere my daffodil watercolors to my page as well. And I'm removing the little things I used to hold those down so that they would stick and I'm going to take out my background paper and look at my pages and see if they're exactly how I want them or if I need to add anything else. When looking at my pages I noticed two things. The flow from left to right kind of stops with that tag so I'm adding just a little bit of fluorescent orange splatter to it to continue that flow that I was trying to create from left to right. I also noticed that it's really dark on that upper left corner and the darkness is missing on the bottom right. You can see see there it's really kind of missing down there so I grab a piece of patty paper that has that Payne's gray on and just stick it underneath my daffodils. This also helps create that left to right flow and helps anchor those daffodils a little bit. And that's it. That is my completed journal page with my poem about daffodils, how I practice kindness and compassion first at a home in my family with me and so that I can be kind and compassionate when I'm out in front of other people. When I'm happy in my everyday life, then I'm able to radiate that happiness to others when I'm out and about. The story of these daffodils is a story of hope. I planted them just a few days before my husband lost his job. I didn't know if I would see them in the spring, but sure enough, we were still in our house. We weathered the storm and the daffodils appeared a couple months later in the springtime. Be sure to check the description box below for a supply list and links, the link to the daffodil watercolor video and a link to your next stop on this YouTube hop. I'd also love to meet you. Comment below, introduce yourself, especially if you're new here. Let me know where you're from, your favorite flower, or anything. I'd also love for you to subscribe to my channel. I have um, a video I post every Thursday on for 30 Minute Thursdays. We also do a mixed media menagerie with a couple other artists every month. I have some future giveaways planned, some surprises going on behind the scenes, and I'd love for you to be part of it. Thank you so much for hopping with us. I hope your heart was filled with joy, hope, compassion, and kindness this weekend, and that you can share it to the world through your own art.